Good afternoon. Let's have a look at the block packing routine, which was developed specifically in relation to the block typology, of which we see a few examples here on the screen. The idea is to have a finite amount of program defined in, um, let's say, roughly the size of rooms uh, or voids, and then uh, pack them in you know, various ways. So in this particular case, we can see we have a number of programmatic spaces, which are shown over here of different dimensions and then a couple of bounding boxes, which stand for the extent of the block. And the idea is to see whether this amount of stuff uh, fits uh, in any sort of optimal way in either of those two uh, boundaries. So the uh, grasshopper environment is organized into, um, first, the container uh, types. So we have, obviously, the two containers that I just described. Uh, right here, these two components. Then we have the uh, program spaces, uh, which are these elements here that I just uh, mentioned. Then we have the actual solver, uh, which is the packing algorithm, the Packrat packing algorithm that takes care of the sorting. The actual conditions that we're evaluating, which is just to minimize the uh, bounding box that these programmatic elements fit in. And then we also have a genetic algorithm solver, which automates the uh, processing of PACRAT to generate uh, enough sort of statistical variations to look for, uh, sort out through, through the results in, in a meaningful way. Uh, we have two manual controls for the PACRAT solver. The control sorting, which just sets the order in which these uh, elements are processed by the solver, and that does have a bearing on the outcome. The other control mechanism is whether this, every single one of those individual boxes is rotated by 90 degrees or not prior to it being sort of included in the packing algorithm. And that too uh, has an impact. So you can see, for instance, in this case, uh, we can try to manually um, fiddle with uh, some of these elements, which in this case results in the exclusion of one of the boxes from that particular packing configuration. So we do have one left over. Now, the best way to actually deal with this is not to uh, run the manual controls, which is a little bit time consuming, uh, rather than let the actual genome fitness solver, the Galapagos solver, do the work by simply uh, running the solver with the defaults uh, of the uh, package, simply by clicking on the start solver, and you see right away, for instance, the rogue box has been reintegrated uh, back into the packing algorithm. So options that generate uh, suitable uh, packing solutions are retained and mate, mate to create other uh, options, sub-options, in this sort of parent-child um, genetic metaphor. So you can see that the options are dwindling very, very quickly. Uh, the good options are the ones registered above the uh, thick orange line right there in the middle of the graph. The rogue options, the less fit, uh, those less fit to evolve, are actually listed in the hatched area below the solid line. So you see that we are actually zeroing in quite quickly towards the right solution. We can also see some of the flickering of the algorithm now uh, doing its song and dance. And I believe that we should be able to stop it relatively quickly to estimate the results, to evaluate the results uh, that we have created. So the graph is now uh, very flat. Uh, it looks like we have worked out the minimum solutions, the optimal solutions, the fittest solutions of the pack are now more or less there. So I'm going to stop the solver right here, okay, and have a look at the result, which is actually really quite good. Having done so, I'm going to close the solver okay, and run it once again with the other uh, option, in other words, the horizontal element. And we see that we have now a, a considerable amount of leftovers. In other words, up to five programmatic elements now have been left out of this configuration. Well, we can just very quickly fix this by running again the solver, which will very, very quickly now repack everything in this different configuration and run the options for us right there. So again, the thick orange line that we see right there in the solver is the uh, 
difference is the boundary between the sort of least fit pool, which sits below, and the fittest pool that sits above it. Now, the fittest pool will dwindle um, because only the uh, fittest options will actually be retained, and that will slowly converge toward this thin orange line towards the right, the upper right part of the graph that collects uh, the optimal configurations that we're interested in. So we can now just stop it and then reinstate the last solution and look at one of the sort of horizontal options that we have. Okay. Having done so, we can now cycle uh, through some of these. So the idea is that we have 20 boxes, three of them are given a different treatment, the three red ones that you see there, but that treatment can of course be passed around uh, to various um, to three boxes out of the 17, which means that eventually uh, we could uh, treat all those elements individually, either as solids, as voids, or as any kind of uh, container with any kind of content. So that concludes uh, the demo for now. Thank you very much, and I will speak to you soon.